It was late at night on Christmas Eve 1885 in the small farming town of Seneca, Illinois. An elderly woman named Matilda Rooney was in the kitchen when she suddenly caught fire. The fire would claim her life as well as the life of her husband who was in the bedroom next to the kitchen. While this is something that is tragic all on its own, what makes this case different is the cause of the fire. Because the Roonies had seemingly fallen victim to a rare phenomenon known as spontaneous human combustion. Matilda Rooney lived with her husband Patrick at their farm outside Seneca, Illinois. They were an elderly couple and at the time of their deaths they had relinquished much of the work around the farm to their farmhands and their son, John. On December 24, 1885, one of the farmhands, a man named John Larson, was spending Christmas Eve with the family. The couple were known to be heavy drinkers, and after sharing several drinks, Larson would excuse himself and go upstairs to sleep in the spare bedroom. At this point, the couple's son, John Rooney, would also excuse himself to go home. At some point during the night, Larson woke during a coughing fit and found that he was having trouble breathing. But for some reason, despite this, he would lay back down and drift off to sleep. When he woke the following morning, Larson noticed an acrid smell and a smoky haze in the air. And when he got up from the bed, he saw that there was soot on his pillow and around the bed where he was sleeping. In some reports, it's even said that he could see an outline of himself on the bed. Larson then immediately ran downstairs to check on Patrick and Matilda. He couldn't find Matilda anywhere, but in the couple's bedroom, he found a figure lying on the floor that he identified as Patrick, who was deceased. This find, in combination with the smell and the smoke in the house, caused Larson to flee the home and to alert the neighbors. He also contacted the couple's son, John Rooney, who immediately sent for a doctor. But for some reason, the doctor was from another town, so while the investigators arrived quickly, the doctor didn't arrive until a day later. The first thing that they noticed when entering the home was the acrid smell. Like Larson had said, Patrick Rooney was lying on the floor of the main bedroom, but Matilda was nowhere to be found. That is, until they checked the kitchen. In the kitchen, they found a large hole that was completely burned through the wooden floor right next to the wooden table in the kitchen. Through this hole, they could see the underside of the house, a pile of ash and bones. A human skull, a cervical bone, some vertebrae, six inches of a right femur, and a badly burned ilium would be retrieved from that hole. It appeared that Matilda Rooney had been completely reduced to ash, except for the bones and her feet, which strangely enough were found badly burned but still intact inside of her shoes. In the end, the conclusion at the time was that Matilda Rooney's cause of death was spontaneous human combustion, and her husband's death had been caused by asphyxiation after he was either overcome by the fumes or maybe he was already passed out due to the alcohol. Early on, the investigators suspected that John Larson was responsible for what had happened to the couple. 
but he would later be cleared given the fact that there was apparently an outline of his body on the bed and around the bed, not to mention the soot on the pillow, which, as far as the investigators was concerned, supported his claims that he had slept through the events of the night. What also cleared John Larson from suspicion was the fact that he passed away two weeks later due to the damage his lungs had received. During the autopsy, it was found that Larson had a buildup of the same soot and greasy residue in his lungs that had claimed Patrick Rooney's life. They also suspected that the couple's son, John Rooney, had something to do with it as he may have stood to gain the most by his parents' deaths. But he would also later be cleared as there were no signs of foul play and no source of ignition could be found for the fire. In fact, the fire seemed to have stayed confined completely to Matilda as the kitchen had no fire damage either. In fact, the only evidence for the fire was the acrid smell and the greasy soot residue that clung to the walls of the house. Keep in mind, there was a wooden table right next to the hole where Matilda had supposedly stood, but that table wasn't even damaged from the fire. And for Patrick Rooney, he had no signs of injuries aside from the damage to his lungs due to the fire, so foul play was completely ruled out. There have been a few theories for what caused this weird fire. One of those theories is that Matilda might accidentally have come into contact with a source of heat and flame. The investigators did find a candle on the table that was partially burnt. It was late at night in winter, so Matilda was likely wearing a nightdress and multiple layers to keep warm. And also, by all accounts, the couple had been drinking heavily during the evening. So the theory here is that the combination of a long, flowy nightdress with a loss of coordination due to the alcohol that they had consumed, Matilda may have accidentally gotten too close to the candle and set herself on fire. While this seems like a very plausible explanation, it's odd that she didn't thrash around or even scream. According to John Larson, there was no sounds. The only thing he noticed was the smell and the fact that he had trouble breathing throughout the night, but he hadn't heard anything. There's also the fact that nothing else in the kitchen was burnt. Not even the wooden table right next to Matilda had burnt. So if the candle was the cause of the fire, why didn't the fire spread? What's interesting too is the fact that the investigators didn't find an external source of ignition also makes it seem unlikely that a candle was the culprit. The alcohol was something that was brought up in the investigation. Both the doctor and the police pointed to the large amount of alcohol that the couple had consumed the previous day. The couple were known to be heavy drinkers, and at the time this happened, the belief was that a buildup of gases in the body, combined with the raising of the blood alcohol level, would increase the risk of the body self-igniting. Though this particular theory has been mostly disproven in modern studies. But despite this, this is not the first time this particular phenomenon has been blamed for a person's demise. To start with, spontaneous combustion or spontaneous ignition is very much a real thing. For example, rags or towels that have been soaked with oils, or hot laundry that was left in piles, can spontaneously combust in the right conditions. And this has been proven. But it's still debated whether or not a human can spontaneously combust the same way an inanimate object can. Descriptions of spontaneous human combustion date back to the 17th century. In 1641, a Danish anatomist named Thomas Bartholin wrote about an Italian knight named Paulinus Vorstius. 
He had been drinking in his home in Milan in 1470. But at some point during the night, he began to vomit fire and he suddenly burst into flames in front of his horrified parents. Bartholin's source for this story was a discussion that he had allegedly had with a descendant of the family. However, it should be pointed out that this particular story has multiple sources, which makes the accuracy of it impossible to verify. Another example of spontaneous human combustion surrounds the mysterious death of one Countess Cornelia Bundy in March 1731. After dinner one evening, the Countess had retired to her bedroom as usual. Her maid would follow her to help her with the evening's rituals and they allegedly spent a few hours talking in the bedroom before the maid would retire to her own bedroom. The next morning, the Countess hadn't gotten up at the usual time, which was very strange. So the maid went to wake her. But when she entered the bedroom, all she found was a pile of ashes, three fingers and two legs on the bed. The room was full of soot and the furniture was covered by a greasy and smelly layer. But other than that, nothing in the room seemed affected by the fire. What caused the Countess's death is a mystery and one that is often linked to spontaneous human combustion. Finally, the last example I'm gonna give you is probably the most well-known case linked to spontaneous human combustion. The case of Mary Reeser. On July 2nd, 1951, Reeser's landlady arrived at her apartment to deliver a telegram. She knocked on the door, but no one answered. She then tried the doorknob, which was unusually hot to the touch. This alarmed the landlady enough that she called the police. When police arrived and entered the apartment, they found Reeser's remains among the remains of a chair in which she had been sitting. Not much of Reeser herself remained though. The police managed to find one foot still in a slipper, part of her spine and a piece of her skull. But that was it. Mary's death is often described as a case of spontaneous human combustion and honestly it probably deserves a video all on its own. There are, of course, more cases linked to the spontaneous human combustion phenomenon and then these three examples I just gave you. In many of these cases where spontaneous human combustion is believed to have occurred, the victim also consumed a lot of alcohol. Like I said with the Rooney case, it was believed at some point that there was a link between alcohol and the combustion. What's also interesting is that most of these victims had low mobility due to either being elderly or in some cases obese, as well as being in poor health. But as I said, spontaneous human combustion is very much debated and the more widely accepted theory is something called the wick effect in which a body starts to burn, which turns the fat of the body into liquid. That fat then seeps into the clothing and acts like a fuel source for the fire, while the clothing acts like a wick. This fire then burns things in the immediate vicinity, but because it's such a slow burn, nothing else is affected. The wick effect has been thoroughly observed and has occurred under certain conditions so it is something that has been proven to happen. In most suspected cases that is linked to spontaneous human combustion, it's instead believed that there is an external source of ignition, such as a cigarette that sets off the wick effect. But all the evidence of this is then destroyed by the fire. Some theories that expand on the wick effect say that due to the victims often being elderly, Natural causes, such as a heart attack, may have been the cause of death. And if they were smoking, their death might lead to that person dropping the cigarette which is still lit. And this still lit cigarette then might cause the victim's clothes to ignite, 
and since the person is already deceased or perhaps in a very weak state, they can't do much to stop the fire from spreading. In the end, what exactly caused the fire that caused the deaths of Matilda and Patrick Rooney, as well as Mary Reeser, and many of the other victims, may never be fully explained. Was it a case of spontaneous human combustion? Or was it something as simple as an accident around a lit candle or a lit cigarette? We may never really know. Real or not, spontaneous human combustion have been debated for a long time. If you ask me, this is one phenomenon that I don't want to be real. The idea that you can suddenly burst into flames for no apparent reason is absolutely terrifying. But what do you think? 